Hey everybody, it's Pastor James Meeks, and as promised, I am here. It's Tuesday night, and we are in search of solutions. That's right. If you break it down, S-O-S, search of solutions. And I am talking to millennials tonight. Who are millennials? Millennials are people who are 30, 24 through 38 years of age. 24 through 38 years of age. That means you were born in and around 1980. Hey, we're here tonight. I am so excited that we're going to hang out for this entire hour. Let me offer up a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, thank you for who you are, your love, your kindness, your great mercy. Thank you for a chance to share with millennials, millennials who know you, trust you, love you. God, I pray that you would touch their hearts, their spirits, that you would give them some fantastic ideas. I pray, God, that uh, this solution night will be one of the greatest nights ever in the history of the world. Touch our millennials everywhere. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. So let me say again that I am talking to millennials tonight. Now listen, millennials, what brought this on? I have been reading all of these books about you, about millennials. So one book, You Lost Me. That's the name of the book. It's saying that millennials are saying to the church, church, you have lost me. Another book, Unchristian. Another book about millennials. Meet Generation Z. And then a book by a colleague, a friend, a mentor, planting new churches in the post age. But there's an entire section on millennials. And guys, this is what I found out. I've discovered that 60% of people who are 24 through 38 have stopped going to church. 60% of people who are in your age bracket don't go to church for whatever reason. Now, I also know that that means that not just you, but it, your friends that you're supposed to reach and witness and talk to. For some reason, your demographic have fallen out with the church. Now, six reasons are given that uh, this age demographic doesn't like church anymore. One is that the church is too uh, anti-homophobic. Another is that the church is too judgmental. Another is the church is too critical. Another is that the church is too judgmental. Whatever the, another one, church is too boring. Okay, I'm here tonight to say to you, that I am in search of solutions. Whatever the church is not doing, I need, we need practical solutions from you. That's right. Who else are we gonna get them from? We need practical solutions from you. Now listen to this, it's ironic. Whereas 60% of millennials don't go to church, 80% of millennials believe in God and 80% of millennials love God. I want to figure out how we can put those two things together. I want to figure out what's the answer. So I'm not here to bash you. I hope you're not here to bash me. I've already told you. I've already told you that, well, hit the share button. Hit the share button real quick. Hit the share button so that you can um share this with many of your friends tonight i want as many people involved as possible so share 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 but i've already told you the church has a problem we have a problem because whatever we're doing we're not doing it right we're not doing it to the satisfaction of your age demographic and so since it was 30 years ago since i was in your age bracket i need help from you what are the solutions? So I have a, a team here with me tonight, a team of millennials, two people. I guess two people could be a team, Mark and Jasmine. And they are here to answer uh, or to shoot me uh, your solutions. And then as they shoot a solution, I'm going to holler it out and we're going to have a good time tonight. So hit the share button, hit the share button. And I'm so inspired and delighted that you guys decided to join me. You're such good people. And your age bracket, your uh, age demographic is the demographic that's going to turn this world upside down. Who knows? You're the people who will bring your age demographic back to church. So let's start. Jess, what we got over there? 
Well, first, I want to shout a couple of people out. Mark from Indiana, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, make sure you type your solutions down here in the chat so that we can get to them. First thing we have from LaTanya is, she says, I would say give them Bibles if you aren't already. I remember getting my little green Bible by a group of Christian people. Just my opinion. T-shirts, too. Young people love T-shirts, bracelets, and things like that. Be blessed. All right. So she said, give millennials a Bible. I will be happy. Any millennial who shows up at the Salem Baptist Church and go to guest services and say, I am a millennial and I don't have a Bible, I will be happy to supply you with a Bible. As a matter of fact, I'll go get a hundred for this Sunday. New Living Translations. I've been encouraging people to read the New Living Translations lately. It's easier to read. I will have a hundred New Living Translations at guest services right here at the House of Hope. I'm excited because our first solution was actually a practical one. It was an easy fix. It's one we're more than able to do and glad to do. And so millennials, all you have to do is show up, get services and say, I'm a millennial. You don't even have to present your ID. Just say, I'm here for the Bible. They'll know you're a millennial. That's a great one. That's a good one right there. That's a good one. Also, uh, remember you can download the Bible on your phones too. If anybody wants to do that, but what what would be the benefit of having um, for you? Do you think the benefit or the difference between having it on our phones and having a physical Bible? Is there a difference? Yes, I think that you should have a physical Bible. Every person should have a physical Bible. Uh, I like to mark in my Bible. I like to go back to my Bible and remember. I like to write dates in my Bible when I hear a sermon. I like to write the title of the sermon and the date of the sermon. Uh, what I'm going through, what I'm thinking about. I like to keep notes in the margin. And when you go back to your Bible over the years, as the years pass, you will be surprised that things that you prayed about, uh, that you wrote about, you actually forgot about. And so it's by reading it and reading your notes in the margin that will help you remember and keep a track of your history with God. And that's a big thing. All right, who else? Solutions. We're, we're on talking about solutions. How do we draw uh, singles to church. I mean, singles, millennials <laughs> to church. <laughs> All right, Rev, we got a we got a good one. We got a good guy who got a great name. We got Mark Jones. Two it's Marks. One Mark was from Indiana, yeah. Indiana and Mark Jones. All right, yeah. Marks, keep coming. All right, here we go. Um, one of the reasons people in my demographic don't go to church is due to the family household. Sometimes it's the parents who overdo the punishment for something small and use the Bible as leverage. The child will resent the parents and the church for that. Okay, and uh, if the parent has decided to use the Bible in a wrong way, don't you take that out on the church. If the parent did something wrong, the church didn't do anything wrong. Don't take it out on the church and don't take it out on God. And so, Mark, that would be my uh come back to you just because that happened look people are human people in church are human people say that people in church are hypocrites and so we are but we're human and we make mistakes we come to church not because of the people in church we come to church because of the god that we serve and so we're here to discover and learn more about god so i would say mark don't take that out on the church just because you know a human being that made a mistake. All right, we do have another question, but I do want to remind everyone in the chat that these are solutions that are coming from 24 to 38 year olds. So if you are a seasoned saint, as we like to say in the church, we want to hear from you, but not quite tonight. We want to make sure these are solutions coming from 24 to 38 year olds. So I just want to keep that in mind. We're all here to learn and glean, but make sure we want to make sure the 24 to 38 year olds are getting their questions in as well. And so, so let me say this before you go to the question. Mm -hmm. Se Season Saints, thank you. Love you. So glad you are a part of listening to this discussion tonight. But remember, type in, I'm a seasoned saint. I'm praying for millennials. Yes. I pray that the solutions that you guys get tonight will be one that uh, blesses the body of Christ. We need your prayers tonight, senior saints, but let the millennials offer the solutions. All right? 
Thank you. So Laquanda said, let's have more events so we can get to know each other better. Once we have a better relationship with each other, the more comfortable we will become going out to witness to others. You know, all of the books that I'm studying, it, it says that uh, millennials are relational. And that's what you guys want to do. You guys want to get together. So what's difficult for me as a 63-year-old uh, pastor is to figure out what kind of events that millennials want to participate in. All right? So I might pick some stuff that you guys don't want to participate in. So this is what I need you to do on In Search of Solutions. I need you to write down and text in uh, or send in the kind of stuff that you want to participate in. So rather than just saying events, give me some names, give me some ideas. Be happy to put together some events. We are putting together an event and uh, I'll tell you about it even before we leave tonight so that you'll know what we are already putting together. But give us some ideas of events that you'd like to participate in. But thank you so much. All right, Pastor, we got another one from Timothy Bennett. He said, dumb it down. He said, when I say dumb it down, I mean, when you preach, make sure it's relatable for us younger people. All right. And we have two pastors here at the Salem <laughs> Church who basically handle the preaching. We have one who dumbs it down because he's dumb. That's me. <laughs> and then we have the one closest to your age group. Uh, Reverend Stephen Thurston, who will force you to bring your dictionary and your thesaurus. And so I'm going to talk to that young fella, and I'm going to tell him that you guys would hope that we dumb it down. I really believe, my personal belief, is that all communication has to be at a level so that everybody can get it and everybody can understand it. So thank you for that. I'll make sure that we keep it way down so everybody could get it all right who we got okay jay says for me it's my work schedule he works seven days a week but he says he watches every stream and donates online as well oh fantastic jay don't want to take this time but i need to do it it was a guy who was dying this is a true story i was standing at his deathbed and he put everybody out the room and he said, Pastor, I'm dying. He said, look at this house. I mean, an immaculate house. He said, look at my wife's furs in the closet. He said, look at the cars in the garage. He said to me, Pastor, do me one favor as I get ready to die. Tell people don't work so hard. He said, in a few hours, I have to go and meet God. And I'm unprepared. Don't know what I will say to him. But I've spent all of my life working on all of this stuff. And now all of it doesn't mean a thing. And so just remember that, Jay, in the midst of all of your working, you got to find time for God. All right? Gotcha. Tasha Max says that uh, other millennials sharing their testimonies would be great because a lot of us are going through the same thing and it will help encourage one another. Yeah, and so maybe the church can have something like uh, taped testimonies. And so is there a way uh, through the Internet? Now, you know, you know, I'm really like lame for asking this, but can't people send in their testimonies? Can't we get yes. at yes. SBCOC.org? Yeah, they can yes. hashtag them on social media. On yeah. Instagram, so Facebook. send in your testimony to what God has done in your life uh, at SBCOC.org. Uh, hashtag SOS. Uh, search of Solutions. Hashtag SOS. We'll know that it's a testimony from a millennial. Uh, Tasha, we'd love to hear your testimony if you have one. And kick it off. Since it's your idea, send in your testimony. And we can play. We can select five or six a week and play them in our millennial circle on in church on Sunday and just splash them on the big screen. So, hey, look forward to seeing you on the big screen. If you got a testimony, send it in. Uh, hashtag SOS. We'd love to have it. Also, just so you guys know, our correct Instagram handle on Instagram is Salem underscore Chicago. Of course, you guys are on our Facebook page. You can also DM us, um, send us a message here on Instagram, or you can email us at info at sbcoc.org. That's info at sbcoc.org. Okay, our next post is from Willie. He says, I believe the church needs to embrace our LGBTQIA people and um, de and not demonize them and love on them. We are a generation of people 
who respect that community and not look upon them as lesser of the lifestyles we choose to live. Politics have taken our generation out of the church. Love you, Pastor. Hey, love you too, Willie. And people who are in the LBGTQ uh, community, we do love you. And I don't want anybody to ever make you think that you are unloved at the Salem Baptist Church of Chicago. Everybody's loved. Everybody's welcome. This is a whole big tent. This is a whole big tent. And we're not saying that there is no person that does not belong under the big tent or under the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus covers everybody. So wherever or whoever has that myth that we don't love and accept and embrace everybody here, it is a myth because we do love you. All right, Pastor, we got one, a good one. This is from Aria. She's a college student at Western University. She is actually a member of Salem, hey. but she's away at college. Shout out to you, Western. Um, but her idea is take a, do a church college tour where you go to other colleges and tell people the importance of God and church and, and having a relationship with God in their life. Uh, yeah, and that's a good idea. It's so many colleges. I guess we'll be traveling all around the United States. But listen, this is what we really need to do, I, I would hope, and thank you for that suggestion, that people in colleges like you uh, invite people to your dorm room and uh, we can do a tour on Facebook and we can just talk to just the kids, the young people that's in your college dorm room. Or if you guys can get people to come to one central place where you all can watch uh, church together and then have a discussion and then shoot us questions that you have directly and we'll be able to answer the questions that you have directly. I think that because of the era that we're in now with technology, the sky is the limit. No longer do we have to do a whole lot of traveling because physically that's impossible, but through this medium, just like now, we can communicate with each other. So let's figure out how to do some of that. I'd love to do it. Love to do it. What I love about what's happening right now in the chat is a lot of millennials or uh, young adults are taking ownership for um, not being witnesses. So we have a couple of comments like that. Melanie Melvin says she grew up here. She's been baptized and christened here, but she feels like she needs to do a better job witnessing to her peers. We also have Myesha who says she was baptized just two weeks ago. Congratulations. Congratulations. She's 25 years old. Since then, she feels amazing, and she feels a better connection to God. And she said, we need to stop being afraid to take that leap of faith. Thank you, Pastor. Uh -huh. How many people do we have on with us tonight? 165 right now. And Fan. the comments are flooding in. I can't even keep up. Fantastic. And keep hitting the share button. Share, share. I think we have almost 45 more minutes left. So keep hitting the share button. We're going to get down to some really good stuff today. And uh, I love you all. And I love the fact that you guys uh, decided to join us tonight for Search of Solutions because we could talk back and forth all day about what's wrong and what's wrong with millennials. I'm not here to say that millennials are bad people because for some reason or another, millennials have lost an attraction to the church. I'm here to put the blame on the church. I'm here to say maybe the church is doing something wrong. And oftentimes, when you do something wrong, you don't even know that you're doing something wrong. But if we've lost you as millennials and we're doing something wrong, please help us to not lose you. Please tell us what it is that we have to do. And who knows, maybe your idea, maybe your solution could be the key to unlock the door. And so keep them coming. Yes. All right. You ready? Yes, sir. We got Joel. He said he's a millennial and we have this mantra church people are judgmental mm -hmm. and he said we want to come to, we want to come to church but we don't always fit into the already established quotation church course church culture i'm sorry right so we begin to feel like outcasts when we come to church mm -hmm. and um you know what joe the church will have to do a better job at embracing people just as they are it right. you would think that this was something that we should automatically know uh, because Jesus, the one who we follow, accepted everybody. Nobody was an outcast. As a matter of fact, he was accused of eating with publicans and sinners because he would just go hang out with anybody. And so his church has to be just like him 
and embrace anybody. And so uh, that's a culture that then churches and I will make sure that it is broken at our church. We often say, and we say to everybody, you know, let people alone. They come in here, they don't look like you, they don't dress like you, so what? We embrace you, we love you, and uh, I pray that if Salem has a judgmental spirit, we're gonna do everything that we can to break that. But you are 100% correct. People should feel loved when they come into a church. They should feel welcome. And I pray that people feel loved and welcome when they come here. If they don't, we're going to do everything that we can to break that cycle. All right. This next one is from Van, who is actually a young adult Sunday school teacher. So if you're looking for a Sunday school just for young adults, we have Young Adult Sunday School here at the House of Hope every Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m. They have food, and it is a great, great, great uh um, service for that so that's a plug on that but van said um he thinks that having a sunday service at 12 30 p.m would be great millennials like to sleep in late and having a 12 30 option will draw in more people uh i try it i don't know if i'll try it at the house of hope house of hope seats ten thousand people uh maybe we could try it at 118th street at one of our other locations maybe at the 109th location, but I'd be willing to give a uh, 1230 service a chance, a try, uh, just for millennials. I would be. So there you go, man. Nice, Rev, nice. So I have uh, Mary here, Mary Howard. Uh, this is a little different. I'm going to switch this one up. She's actually a seasoned saint, but she's taking accountability for for some of the older people and saying she thinks that some of, us, some of the older people should get a millennial and help them and walk them along the way. What do you think about that, Reverend Meeks? You know, I think that the uh, pattern that life is supposed to follow is that every older person is supposed to have a younger person that they're mentoring and that they're teaching. Uh, in the Bible, we know that Paul uh, taught Timothy uh, everything I know as a pastor, I learned from older pastors. Nobody comes here knowing anything or everything. As a matter of fact, at our uh, meeting this, we call it PALS, uh, Pastors and Leadership. At that meeting this Saturday, your ticket in the door is a millennial. Everybody, the head of the ushers, the head of the choir, the head of the greeters, everybody must bring a millennial in with them in order to get in the meeting uh, because we believe and this is what I'm saying that uh, in order to get young people involved uh, we have to want you we have to accept you we have to be open arms and so we think that everybody should be training or mentoring a millennial but I also think because Millennials you all are 24 years old and you are 24 through 38 I also think you ought to have somebody from Generation Z with you. You ought to have the next generation under you that you are uh, training and teaching. We have too many kids, too many people making mistakes because they don't have somebody older in their ear. And I'm talking about older, uh, motivating them uh, for the right reason, the right purpose. And so, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, all of us should have somebody under us that we are mentoring. All right. My next uh a comment I would like to pull a Reverend Meeks if I could and answer it myself Alrighty. so I'm going to do the comment I'm going to tell you an answer Danielle said that she thinks events are great but she honestly doesn't know the names of any of the young adults in the church is there a way we can have meetings or groups to build relationships with each other and then plan social events it's hard to come to some of the social events when she doesn't know anyone so she feels bad when she attends on Sunday, and she doesn't know any of her fellow young adults. So, Danielle, I'm going to ask you to email me, jasmine at sbclc.org, because we have some ministries that we need you to help us with. The best way to build relationships is to join a ministry and start serving. You get to work with these people every single week. We have a lot of young adults on our um our membership team we have a lot of young adults serving in the youth ministry and in the children's church that is the best way to build relationship is to join a ministry so email me jasmine j-a-s-m-i-n-e at sbcoc.org and i would love to connect you to a ministry that you can serve and start getting to know each other and then you'll know me because we're going to become friends now danielle when you get to know jasmine 
Just watch the company you keep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All, All right, right, Rev. We got another one. Uh, Brianna Carmen. It said, "Can we have updated music selections?" Mm. Oh my God! Now Jasmine has been harping on <laughs> that. Uh, so here, here is, I think, what's happening. Most of the people who handle our music is Gen X and Baby Boomers. And so they're older. We're older. And many of our congregants are Baby Boomers and Gen Xs. And so it's old music, and we like it, the old music. But we need young people because we need youthful music. So we need younger people on the music team. So I'll tell you what. Uh, those of you who are musically inclined and you love music, solutions. It's all about solutions. Send in the kind of songs you want to hear. Send, send your playlist. Send them to us. Your Christian playlist. Your playlist that we could use in church. But uh, yeah, we want to do it. We want to. Uh, uh, I, I did. I was gonna say sp spruce up, but that ain't the right <laughs> word. But uh, update. update, okay. We want to update our musical repertoire. You know, I love the old songs. I was raised on the old songs, but I'm not stuck in them. So we want to update them. So send us your playlist. Send us some songs. We'll learn them. We'll sing them. And come join us. Come sing them with us. Get on the praise team. We have room on the praise team for younger people. Gotcha. We have Marvin Martin here, Rev. We actually were just talking about this. Uh, the other day, he said, can we have a Friday night service of praise and worship and especially prayer at 118th in Indiana that is geared towards young adults topics instead of me going to happy hour? <laughs> a Friday, That's a good one, Marvin. <laughs> a Friday night service of prayer and praise and topics. Yes, so sir. it'll just be yeah, fantastic. We used to do that, as a matter of fact, 30 years ago. Friday night, we were on the um, a radio station. Salem was live on the radio 30 years ago. And uh, we would fill the church with nothing but 30-somethings. And I would preach on relationship. Uh, um, yeah, those are some great nights. And uh, so, yeah, we can do that. I I'd love to do it. All right, so we also have another comment from Mark who has been very vocal, so thank you so much, Mark. But you have a question or a comment about aspiring production people in my demo in your demographic. Give some of those people the chance to help with video service, production, dance, and oh, choir. God. Guess what? Can I take that? Yes. Hey. I was going to alley you. Alley you. <laughs> oh, Slim Duck. Yo, Mark. I'm, my name is Mark, too, so this is going to be really easy. I am the media director here at Salem, so that's my department. I'm looking for some great, energetic young people that can match my excitement, and we can make history for the kingdom. So simple, mtutson at sbcoc.org, m-t-u-t-s-o-n at sbcoc.org. Email me, and let's build. Let's make this great. Let's make history. And if any of you are looking to get involved, you can email our regular Salem email. I will put you wherever you need to be. Info, I-N-F-O, at sbcoc.org. All of you are saying you want to get involved. You want to do more. You need solutions. We need you to help get on some of these ministries because, honestly, the baby boomers are tired. Yes. They need her. Yes. When it's raining, the arthritis start flaring up. Yeah. So we need you to come help serve with us. Let's do it. Well, you know, uh, we've had a chance over the last 34 years uh, to do many things. We've had a chance to make history in many areas. But, yes, the baby boomers – have done a lot and and they would keep doing it if i would just push them if we would push them but they shouldn't have to do it all and baby boomers should be getting ready to move aside and to step out of the way so let me uh reiterate why we're here tonight we're here because we're looking for solutions in search of solutions that's right and the solutions for what we're trying to find out why is it that 60 percent of millennials don't go to church there's one common book it says you lost me it's a book about millennials and millennials are saying millennials are saying that the church is losing them well i for one don't want to lose millennials i for one don't want to lose your friends and i want to figure out a way if we're losing you how to attract you back how to get you back in the church how to get you involved 
how to use the gifts, the talents that God has given you. And so we're here tonight in search of solutions. I'm asking millennials, that's who we're talking to tonight, to give us your solutions. Hit the share button, hit the share button, share with some other millennials so they can join us for these last 30 minutes. And how do we get solutions? How do we figure out what it is that will attract millennials to church and so that you can use your talents and gifts? Because 80% of all millennials believe in God. So if millennials believe in God, but they're leaving the church, there is some disconnect. How do we figure it out? How do we fix it? That's what we're going to be doing. And so next question. Um, the next comment is from Taya. And I think this is very uh, interesting. A lot of millennials want to know how can they be a better witness? So she says she has a lot of millennial friends like herself who just don't believe in God. So she wants to know how can she be as a millennial a better witness to her friends and how can she reach them? You know, one of the ways to be a better witness is that people have to see something in you first. It's really hard if a person, and I'm not talking about this young lady at all. I don't know her. I'm just talking how we generally teach this subject. It's really hard to say something to a person about Christ and we don't exemplify any characteristics of him. It's hard to invite people to church and we don't go ourselves. And so one way that we can be a witness is that when we come to church prayerfully, we are learning about God. We're learning about who Jesus is. And we're just simply going back, telling other people what we've heard, what we've learned, and what the Lord has done for us. We tell people about a prayer that we pray that God answered. And since he answered my prayer, he can answer your prayer. And so one of the ways of being a witness is to be a satisfied <coughs> customer. You know, people who are on the commercial, they say, I tried this hair uh, gel <laughs> and it worked for me. It could work for you. Well, that's how you be a witness. I tried God. I pray. I talk to him. I read my Bible. And I have inner joy and inner peace. It works for me. It could work for you. That's the simplest way. And that's the only way to be a witness. You have to let God into your life and let him work for you. And you just tell other people what he did for you. All right, Rev. We have B. Frank here. She says, give proof. We don't just believe in what people tell us anymore. We actually do research and have explored other religions and their practices, such as meditation. I think focusing on spirituality and strengthening our internal awareness along with practical teaching of God would be helpful. Hmm. All right. So what's the question? So that was her offering of Not a, a question. It's a solution. solution. Her, her solution. All right. Give proof. Give proof. Mm -hmm. Now, I uh, can honestly tell you, B, and thanks so much that Christianity is not afraid to put Jesus next to anybody and we're not afraid to put him next to meditation next to because we have a track record of thousands and thousands of years to go on uh, but I had something really deep that I was going to say to you too and, and, and it slipped me uh, but we don't mind comparing Christianity with other religions uh, and so I'll be glad to give you any kind of proof that, that you want to. But, oh, yeah, that's what I was going to tell you, though. But in the end, there is this last element of Christianity. And there is this last element of God that will never be able to be proved. And that is faith. Faith is something that you really, really just trust and believe without really knowing. If you knew it. It wouldn't take faith. In the end, we can tell you that there is a God, but you cannot. There is nobody that can give you a selfie. There is nobody that could give you his telephone number. There is nobody that could give you proof that there is God. In the end, God is somebody that we just have to believe in, and that's an element of faith. God wants something from us, too. He wants us to trust him, and in the end, uh, we, we can do all the, I could give you all the testimonies of all of the people who tried God and God has worked for them. He's worked for them. But in the end, you got to have your own faith in it. Yep. We have a lot of people who are saying they missed you sing. They miss you millennials singing the he saved me remix. So uh -huh. you need to bring that back for them because obviously that's the element of music that they miss. 
that is old school. And you need to bring it back for the millennials. And believe it or not, I listen to it Saturday night. Guess what? It's on YouTube. <laughs> it's on YouTube under Pastor Meeks Medley. Somebody sent it to me. I found it. It's great. It's one of the, the best ones out there. Uh, but it's Pastor Meeks Medley on YouTube. But I'd be glad to sing it. Uh, Rev, Deidre Robinson said, uh, I think we're on the right path with this. Uh, based off this comment, have weekly Facebook lives around topics that appeal to millennials. This is one way to reach them. Fantastic. And so uh, under solutions, send in your topic that you want to discuss and uh, we'll be glad to build uh, a repertoire around, you know, you and what you want to discuss. So the strange thing is when I call my old self picking the topics and there ain't nothing that people want to talk about. So I want to hear what you want me to talk about and what we need to talk about. I'd be glad to do it. All right. We have a lot of people that are still talking about doing meet and greets and doing events where they can get to know other millennials. That is probably one of the most commented things. So, so should I start out? The, should I tell them about my idea? I think you should tell them. All right. So <laughs> I have an idea. Do we have a place yet? Not quite yet. All right. On the fourth Sunday uh, after church at one o'clock, we are picking a place and uh, it's going to be a millennial brunch. It will be from one to four and I will be there uh, to meet and greet millennials. I am not coming with my Bible. I am not coming to preach. Uh, I will be there. As a matter of fact, we're trying to find a spot. Maybe one of you can help us out. We're looking for a spot with karaoke. We're looking for a spot perhaps with a, a live band. Maybe we could bring a gospel band, but we're going to do brunch. Uh, we're looking for a place we can eat and just hang out from 1 to 4. And so uh, this is the fourth Sunday in March for all millennials. So those of you who know a good spot, uh, tell us right now what spot it is, and uh, we'll be letting you know where we're going to be. So this is going to be a big meet and greet for uh, all millennials and i'll be looking forward to spending that time with you we need that spot to have enough room for us to do a proper swag surf because we can't have sunday brunch and not whip out a swag surf absolutely at some point sean mac are you available <laughs> march 24 <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Come I on, know, Sean Mac. I know not what a swag surf <laughs> is. No, we're going to have Reverend Meek swag surfing, so make sure you at that brunch because we're going to have Pastor Meek swag surfing at the Sunday brunch. And we're getting up some G-Star jeans. So it, it's swag, it's swag <laughs> surfing is what you want. Swag surfing is what you get. All right? So there are a lot of people who want to talk about some deeper issues that we feel like they feel like we need to address in the church, like sexual assault and things like that, depression. So they want you to start addressing some of those things in the church as well. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, the right place to do it. Um, sexual assault happens and uh, depression is definitely going on. But you see, that's the other thing that we believe about God, and that is God has taught us how, and he's told us, and I would love to teach you how to do it, how to cast our cares on him. There's so much depression that we're carrying that we're not even supposed to carry because God said, uh, there's a song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, that says, Oh, what peace we often forfeit, and oh, what needless pains we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. If we take some of these things to God, we don't have to carry them. There's another passage of scripture. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. See, that's the joy and the beauty of knowing what's in the Bible and knowing what it says. The Bible actually says that I can cast my cares on Jesus. I could talk to God and I could be relieved of my anxieties and burdens. And listen, I've been... Uh, young but now I'm older and I've lived long enough to know that it actually works I'm not talking about anything that somebody else told me I'm actually telling you that that's what I do with my depression I have learned to give it over to God and so yes sometimes I think that that's getting across to people and it's really not getting across to people and so maybe it's because we're not taking the subject and saying depression, mm -hmm. how to deal with your depression. But yes, 
uh, a, a, a series is coming uh, to a church near you. All right. Rev, that was awesome. Being a person dealt with depression, that's totally a topic. And being a millennial, I definitely have a lot of friends. We have this conversation, so I think that would be awesome. And we have a great, we have a great long list of the same thing right now. A lot of millennials want to have a retreat, Rev. So can we get a ski lodge and get out there and do some skiing and hear the word of God and enjoy some fellowship? Uh, absolutely. What we need is a uh, millennial uh, retreat committee. And uh, all you guys have to do is put together a, a retreat and uh, make some suggestions for some speakers and uh, put me on the list somewhere. I'd be glad to come and hang out. And uh, there is nothing forbidding us. Millennials, this is your church. This is your church. It's not a we want to have. Hey, Rev, can we have? This is your church. Let's put it together. Let's plan it. Let's do it. The only thing that's holding us back is us. Nobody's stopping us from having brunch. What was that? A swave serve? Swag serve. Swag serve. Swag serve. Yeah, ain't nobody stopping, <laughs> ain't, ain't nobody stopping us from doing none of that. Getting cut jeans, what you say you're going to have me? G-Star, we're going to get Rev some G-Star jeans. Nobody's stopping none of that. No, nobody. All we got to do is do it. Like they say, Nike, just do it. All right, Jess? So I think this is very interesting because uh, we have a very long comment, so I'm not going to read it all, but uh, basically it's referring to the same thing that B. Frank said. So we have some young adults that feel like they need their message dumbed down, and then we have other young adults that possibly grew up in church grew up in Salem that feel like they would like more death. So they want to hear about hermeneutics and exegesis and things like that. So what would you suggest or can we find a balance between newer Christians that are millennials didn't grow up in church and then some of Christians that are looking for a deeper understanding? What's the solution for those people? Yeah, And then let's bear in mind that we also have sitting in that same congregation, we have the baby boomers, we have the Gen X's, we have uh, uh, the builders. And so uh, that's my challenge often is like, how then do we meet the need of everybody? How is something dumbed down or how is something uh, taken up so that one group doesn't get lost and another group? Fit? So in that we have here at Salem, Reverend Stephen and I, uh, we can always do uh, different things and even if we don't do it we can have classes for those who want to go deeper we don't have to have every Sunday uh, us trying to take everybody deeper we can have particular classes for that uh, I think that when people go swimming and they learn how to swim they don't just throw everybody in the deep end nor do they put everybody in the shallow end there's beginner classes there's intermediate classes and so uh that's what sunday school is for as well uh we have sunday school here at salem and there should be some millennial sunday school classes that take a deeper dive on all of these issues that we're talking about and so if we have to construct more of those let's construct more of those we might not be able to hit everything on sunday morning not everything mm -hmm. So let's construct classes around what it is that millennials want to be involved in. To that point, Rev, uh, D'Angelo Martin said, can we form a millennial board to help combat some of the issues and create uh, solutions with you? Uh, yes. Yeah. So is the word, is the word ministry overworked, overlooked, like millennial ministry? You know, because mostly things in churches be ministries. Right. Uh, do we go with the word board, millennial board? This is what I want to encourage because I was going to read a comment from Stephen that says, so it'll, it'll reiterate, I think training and placing more young adults in leadership roles is key. Young adults connect with what they see. There's a perception that some ministries look old and out of touch from outside because millennials only see seniors representing different ministries within the church. And the answer is that we need you all to volunteer to help. We have some ministry leaders that are ready to step down. And if you will come and be a part of a ministry, then we would love to have some millennials or younger people in key roles. Me and Mark and uh, our youth pastor and our children's pastor, we're holding it down for the young people. But we need you guys to volunteer. So if you in, um, are interested, you can email info at sbcoc.org. And, and also, we had this conversation today. Millennials, we, we putting our voice out there, but we're not activating. 
So let's activate. So we say we want change, we want new, we want fresh. We are the new and fresh. So let's get involved. Let's bring our ideas. Let's volunteer. Let's get on ministries. Come on, let's activate y'all. Let's get out here. Let's let's do it. Let's show up, show them that we can just not talk about it, but be about it. So and Salem interested in having some new young leadership. Yes, as a matter of fact, you know, we have Man Cave every uh, first Sunday with all the men of the church. The leader of Man Cave is Brother RJ, uh, who, who's a young man. It's not a, I, I've had a choice of a lot of older guys to lead our Man Cave, but I wanted RJ to do it. Uh, we have to, and you guys are right, show you uh, on purpose, uh, younger people doing things on purpose. And so I'm excited about this conversation because I'm looking for uh, an influx of young people. But one of the things we can't do, and that is we can't show young people if young people are not here to be shown. And so that's what we're talking about tonight, solutions. And so back to the um, millennial board, uh, millennial group, uh, millennial surf swaggers. Uh, yeah, let's call it whatever y'all want to call it. But yes, we can have one. And here's the other thing. Nobody's holding us back. It ain't like we have to go and get permission from another group of people to start something for millennials. I'm here right now. Uh, you're here right now. So let's start it. Yes. All right. I'm sorry. It's just so many things. I'm trying to trying to rifle through all of you guys' things. Here's a uh, one from Jerry. I'm sorry if I said, or Jariah, however you say it. A lot of millennials think that the Bible is a book full of fairy tales. I think you keep it a thousand with real life problems and show the Bible as an instructional tool for life that would be a great help for us and other generations. Yeah, you know, uh, the Bible is the is is our our authority, and I believe that in any society anywhere, you you, you gotta have something that where the book stops now here this is what i say about the bible young people uh everybody uh and i preached this not long ago uh, a sermon called the manual those of you who want to look at it go online right now at sbcoc uh and or on facebook live and look up a sermon called the manual in which i say everything that you guys buy you buy cameras it's a little booklet in the camera. You buy a computer, it's a booklet in, the, in it. Everything that we buy, a book comes with it. Well, why would we think that God would make a world and not give us some kind of instructional guide to go with it? We believe that the Bible is God's instructional guide to go along with how man is supposed to work, how man is supposed to treat each other, and that's our manual. When we get off our square and not want to follow it, Man, some terrible things happen. And so I'd love to talk to you more in depth after you see the manual. Go and look at the manual, and then we'll talk further about it. Wow. Man, Rev, that manual was one of my favorite sermons. It really challenged me to read the word more. And we have a great question from Adina. She said, a lot of millennials don't come to church because they're not, they're not financially stable, and they don't want to be judged for not being able to give. Can you answer that for us? Fantastic. Nobody who comes to church have to give. Nobody has to give. Now, we believe that uh, giving, when we give, we believe that God blesses us. We believe that no matter how little we give, God blesses us off the little. But listen, in church, in our church, nobody knows when you're giving. Nobody knows what you give. Uh, we don't walk around and give an offering. We don't give three and four offerings we give one offering and we pass our envelope down and if you just let it pass you and pass nobody ever knows whether you give or not don't ever let lack stop you from coming to church nobody will question you about your giving or if you gave or if you didn't give that's between you and god but i pray that as you come and don't have anything to give that you grow to the point and your faith grows to the point where god will bless you and you'll want to give and want to have something to give. If that day never comes, you still are always welcome. All right. So we have a comment from Sabrina. And she says she's a millennial with four kids under four. God bless you. 
And so she's happy about Children's Church, obviously. But she said she was an old-time Salem member, not old-time, but she's young, where we had a D building. If you remember, the D building was a nursery. So she is saying it's hard for her to come to church with her small children and focus um, with small children. So there's, like, a lot of comments about millennials and having their small children. So do we have a nursery or can we revive the nursery? Yes, we do. Uh, We have, what's that group called? Joyful Noise. Joyful Noise. All right. So we have Joyful Noise. Noise. Joyful Noise starts before kids are able to go to Children's Church. They can go to Joyful Noise. And so, yes, we do have a place for the kids. And uh, come on to church, and we'll figure out what to do with the kids. If not, they'll be standing in the hall when you get out of church. We'll have them in the hall somewhere. So, Red, uh, a few people are asking for a, a possibly a safe space where guys can and girls can come and play basketball safely. For millennials? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, we have a place called the House of Hope, <laughs> <laughs> and it's as safe as, uh, what do you mean by safe? I don't understand. They said so. a, a lot of guys can't afford gym memberships or don't have the don't have the money for a gym membership, and they just want to have a safe place that they can play basketball. Yeah, so let's get the uh, Millennial Ministry going, and the Millennial Ministry can have the House of Hope any uh, Thursday night and Friday night, and the Millennial Ministry should be able to sponsor uh, not only basketball for them, but basketball for Gen Z. But in order to do that, we need enough. You know, the House of Hope has 3,000 seats on the floor. That means we have three regulation basketball courts. We have enough for a volleyball court and two basketball courts at the same time. However, to go through the expense and taking up 3,000 chairs and putting them back down, we would be glad to go through the expense, but we need enough people to make it worth it. And so to go through the expense and then have five guys show up talking about we want to play basketball <laughs> uh, it is an expense that's not worth it. So let's build the ministry. Let's get enough people in here. Uh, I would love to see uh, the House of Hope full uh, of people every night in the week. Uh, and and plus Wednesday for Bible class, and we can take the chairs up and and keep them up all week and have activities in here all week. But it can't be done with just a few of us trying to work it. It has to be five and six hundred of us. If we got that going, we would love to do it. All right, we have a question that says uh, from B. Osei, I'm a millennial, and what is the best book to study the Bible more? What is the best book? Is there a book or, now I, I do hear a lot of people saying you need to study your word more. What does that look like um, on a, on a I guess, an everyday perspective for a millennial? I was study the word? Yeah, let me, let me simply say to a millennial that the best book of the Bible to start with is the Gospel of St. John. St. John is the gospel that teaches us about who Jesus is and I encourage you as a millennial to start reading two chapters or three chapters a day underline that's why I talked about underlining write notes uh, and find you a seasoned saint another person who knows more about the Bible to ask questions of Uh, you guys are in the day and age of Google now Uh, I hate to send you there often, but you can ask Google, what does John 2 and 12 mean? Uh, And Google will tell you what John 2, you might be able to ask Siri. Uh, I heard Siri, Siri Siri could pray, as a matter of fact. I heard Siri pray another day. Siri Siri took me in. Did she have some oil? Siri got some oil. Siri (laughs) took me in. But uh, you guys, uh, you you could just read John. Start with the Gospel of St. John, and then you got to find a Sunday school teacher you have to find uh, uh, another person that you know who knows the Bible a little better than you so that you can ask your questions, what does this thing mean? Remember this now. We also believe and we know the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible. The Holy Spirit lives in you. Before you read your Bible, all you have to do is bow your head and say, Now, Holy Spirit of God, as I read the Bible, as I read these three chapters today, I want you to show me what you need for me to know this day. Amen. And you start reading, the teacher of the Bible will be your teacher. 
Amen. And that was good, Rev. And uh, just another note that helped me, the Bible app, me and Jazz was just talking. As uh, Rev, the Bible app has been great. We talk about it a lot in the office, uh, different uh, Bible um, translations. translations, as well as the 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 one thing we do where we all share and we read the Bible together. Oh, the um, hmm, devotions. The, the devotionals, the Bible devotionals, and the Bible app is a phenomenal. Yes. So that's if you have an iPhone or Android, uh, go ahead and download it and you'll love it. Rev, I actually got a personal text from a friend of mine who's a millennial. Asked, uh, is the can the church talk more about millennial relationships and how to date as well as marriage? Uh, it's, it, there is no such thing as millennial relationships, okay? <laughs> there is a such thing as relationships. There's a such thing as dating. There's a such thing as marriage. And, yes, what we want to be able to do is talk about these things and not come off critical and not come off as judgmental. Uh, there are some rules. There are some do's. There are some don'ts. And uh, the only reason I know this is because I've been in ministry now for 40 years. I've been pastoring the church. That's right. Can't believe it. For 40 years. And I've seen people make mistakes, man. And some of those mistakes are costly. And some of those mistakes are being made over and over. And they're being repeated by generation after generation. So I think what the church has to start doing is simply saying, hey, here are some guidelines for when you date and that, that that's just like it used to be a time that when a, a young lady met a young man she didn't just give her phone number the first time she met the guy she just didn't do it there's just some things that uh are good things to be able to check off on your check off list and so i want to be able to talk about dating and talk to millennials and uh older people and everybody else who are dating but i don't want to come off as you know the authority and so you got to do it this way uh but it's basic guidelines that can help all of us and so now listen tonight we've been on uh how much time we got now four minutes Rev. four minutes in search of solutions this is all about solutions uh how can we uh help uh, we are losing a generation. This book says you lost me. Millennials feel like uh, the church uh, has forgotten about them. We're here tonight to say that no, we haven't. Uh, we want your solutions and ideas, how we can be uh, better, how we can reach you. And so I want you to share tonight with your friends. I want you to share uh, this Facebook post with your friends. Uh, I think you can keep on leaving comments and solutions mm -hmm. yes. you can keep on leaving comments and solutions i'm gonna get to them we're gonna get to them because we want to know from you how do we fix what is broken 60 percent of all millennials are not coming to church we want to change that how do we fix what's broken 80 percent of you believe in god so i know you want to come to church i know you want to get involved how do we fix it so we're going to take the last one and uh don't forget to hit the share button this has been fun, fun, fun. I want you all to know that I love you, care deeply for you, and uh, I'll be back. I'll be back to Thursday night at the same time with Generation Z. Thursday night with Generation Z. That ought to be a lot of fun. And those of you who are baby boomers, we'll get, we'll get to our night. I don't know when our night is going to be, but we're going to get to it. Um, I do want you to do really quickly. A lot of people are saying that they have children under three, and that's what all the nursery provides uh, care for. So can you tell how our first nursery started here at Salem, and that will answer their questions. What, with, with Jamil? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Our first nursery started at Salem with Jamie, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, But I don't remember the story, honey. I'm well, just, well, what so I was trying to get it. at. <laughs> Is that the mothers of the children had to start the nursery? Oh yeah, so we need Jamel you guys. and Patrice. Yeah, yeah. So we need you guys that have children. If you could pitch in to watch the kids, maybe a Sunday, and you all get together, then we can start the nursery. We are stretching some of our people so thin because we don't have enough people that are willing to volunteer and help that out. So we would love to start a nursery for kids under three or smaller children, but of course they require more help. So we need more help. And Jazz is 100% correct, now that I remember. Uh, yeah, the first nursery started with the mothers who uh, had children that age. And so we, we took it upon ourselves, and we started the nursery, and that's how it started. And so, yes, we need some of you mothers to uh, help us out. We love to do all of these things. All of these things that you're talking about, 
takes people. It takes people. And we love to do it. And here's the greatest thing that I have learned about the millennials, and that is uh, you guys want to be hands-on. You guys want to be involved. And so let's take it tonight. Let's start tonight. You know how to email us now. You know how to contact us now. You can give us your solution. You can tell us what you want to do. We're going to throw you in. You want to be thrown in the deep end? You could, we're going to throw you in. We're going to throw you in and uh, get you involved. There are a lot of projects. You know, we didn't talk anything about projects. Millennials like to do stuff, build yes, stuff. Uh, we need to do it all, but we need you here in order for us to do it. And so do I sign off now? Yes, sir, Rev. A lot of people are asking, are you going to do this again next week? Uh, no pressure. Uh, no, no pressure, but uh, it won't be until April. The next one will be in April. I'll start back again in April. Uh, I'm at the point where James Meeks has done a lot of work, and I got to take off for a few weeks and get a little bit of rest. But in April, uh, I'll tell you what. Let's, let's talk again after the uh, Millennial Brunch. All yes. right. Yes. Our next one will be after m the millennial brunch. Let's see how the millennial brunch goes. And then we'll announce then at the brunch when, we when we're going to get back together again. But we will get back together again real soon. And so until then, God bless you. God bless your family. God bless your household. But more than anything else, let God use you to be a solution. God bless you.